And all that acknowledged, it's time for us to go ahead and move into uh, what we call Mission Sunday, our annual responsibility of providing you the stewardship of our congregation in the previous year. Now, many years ago, we did this like on a Wednesday or a Thursday night. Every four-square church is required to have an annual meeting whereby our stewardship is fully reported to you. And in those early years of our service here, we had about 15 of you show up on that Thursday night. We're really grateful for your trust. I chose to understand that as an, as, as an extension of trust. But we really wanted to have a venue where we could hear how God is moving in our midst and celebrate it together. So years ago, we just decided, forget it. We're going to move it to a Sunday morning when we're all gathered, and we're going to share. Whatever there is to share, we're going to share it. Now, for many, many years, it's really been a good report. God's kindness has been on display to us, and we're going to see that again this morning. So... On your phone, you can see a digital copy of the report we're going to get to shortly. Also, you're going to find on that Connect card an opportunity to ratify council members. And you need to be a member of our church in order to do that. So please have your phone out, look at that Connect card. If you want to get the, the digital copy of our annual report, you can go there to the Sunday portion of the website and you'll see sermon notes. Click on that. You, it'll pull up every one of the slides I'm about to show you. Now, if you would like a physical copy of this, you can have it. So just go ahead and raise your hand now. The ushers are walking forward as we speak and they will hand you a physical copy of the 2023 financial report. If you're brand new here, welcome. We're glad you're here. This is without question the most unique Sunday of the year. We greatly value the teaching of scripture. In fact, we are in a prolonged series in which we are studying the life of David. We'll be back at that study next Sunday. But for today, we're going to look at this and, and potentially you'll go, great. Of all the Sundays I would choose to show up, it's the financial report. Dear God in heaven. I would think that if I were you, and I'm sensitive to that, right? Here's one of the startling things we've discovered is that there are a number of you in this room who've told me that your first or second Sunday was this Sunday years ago. And it was one of the reasons you chose to continue and then to commit to this congregation it, in that we choose to steward ourselves with clear vibrant accountability. And we hope that that very much is on display to you today. So my hope, if this is a first time, while we're not preaching today per se, I, I may get to a little devotional at the end if there's time, we'll find out. But while I'm not preaching, there is wonderful things to be learned about our congregation today. And, and I think this is at the top of the list. You're going to discover the grace of God that has caused us to grow into and become a very generous hearted and generous with resources sort of congregation that cares about the works of the kingdom of God on earth. We are an outpost of the kingdom of heaven right here in unincorporated Snohomish County called Mill Creek Forest Corps, technically with a Linwood address. We like to say we have identity issues. <laughs> That's us. But we, due to our proximity here off the freeway, we gather people from all over the area, Mill Creek, Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, Snohomish. And here we gather together. We are an outpost of the kingdom of heaven on earth, invited to join Jesus in doing the good works he has prepared in advance for us to do. So the first thing that I wanna put in front of you this morning is our council. If you don't understand our polity as a Foursquare church, here's essentially how we are governed. So Foursquare is, without question, a senior pastor-led movement or a lead pastor movement. I am the lead elder, and I also lead as the chair of our council. Many churches would call them boards. In Foursquare polity, they are called the council. 
And we have council members that are ratified by the membership of the congregation. So they never get to serve unless you as the members allow them to on your behalf. So the council is responsible to steward the resources of our congregation towards funding the mission of Jesus as we envision it here within our local context. So we have a, a team of elders or pastors and we, we do the visioneering together, if you will. But we bring that to the council. The council's responsible to create a budget and they are responsible to ensure that we stay responsibly in that budget. And when we've budgeted for goods, then we as a, a ministry staff and team know our marching orders. We know what we have to work with in a given year. And should there be an expense or a need that isn't budgeted, well, then we have to go through the process of requesting those funds from the council. So the council's a very important body uh, of stewardship within our congregation, and they have served us extremely well. Now, the two existing council members that you ratified last year that will remain for another year of service, they are Phil Onishi and Eric Johnson. You saw Phil playing the bass today. They are wonderful humans. We actually got special provisions from our district supervisor. So Foursquare is organized that we have a Northwest district supervisor. He appointed Jennifer and I. He can remove us, although that is not in the plans. Good news. Uh, but we got special permission from him to allow these two to serve two more years. That was last year. In our polity, you can serve two two-year terms. I don't want to confuse you, meaning they can serve four years in a row. You have to ratify them twice in order to do that. You did that last year, but these gentlemen have been on the council now for a bit longer than that, and in order to be on the council longer, our district supervisor has to give us permission. We acquired that. You ratified them again last year. We asked for that due to being in a season of the building project and walking through a situation with Sound Transit, which I will give you an update on later in our gathering. They've served us well, another year of service. Today, I need to ask you to ratify three to continue to serve on our council. So we will not have any new council members should you today say yes. But these are Kristen Beck, Liz Candu, and Kurt Lillibridge. They have served for the last two years. You ratified them two years ago. I'm asking that you would ratify them for two more years of service. Let me tell you briefly about them. Liz has been a part of Mill Creek Foursquare for the last five years. She's presently serving in numerous areas of our congregation, including children's ministry, the coffee team, maybe when you walk in on a Sunday, she's giving you your coffee. She also loves to serve on our pop-up pantries as we help feed those in our community. Liz spent eight years on active duty as a Navy JAG. She retired from full-time work last year after 30 years of federal service and now works part-time in her own legal practice providing estate planning services. That's Liz. Kristen, She's been a part of our church for 13 years and really active for the last seven. She's an attorney in the Air Force, so we have two JAGs on our council, and they have proven very helpful. I once thought I wanted to be a lawyer. I did. Tom Cruise made it look really, really cool in A Few Good Men. And I was a junior in high school when I went to see that in the theater. I wanted to be that guy, right? But when I watch them pour over our contracts and look for the minutia of words, I think, I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. <laughs> but gosh, are we grateful for each of you as they here sit among us. Kristen loves our church and has served in children's ministry. She's helped lead and rooted and been a group leader in our women's discipleship. Now, Kurt, he and his wife, Leslie, have been a part of our church for 25 years. I would call him a pillar of our congregation. He's a mortgage broker, and he is working alongside his sons. He's served in many places over the years, including children's and youth ministries, marriage groups, and has been, in the most recent past, an essential part of our building project and our dealings with Sound Transit. So, Kurt, thank you. All three that we are seeking to re-ratify are here in this service 
So would you please go ahead and take that digital connect card and let us know as a member that you are willing to allow them to serve us in this stewardship space for two more years. And we will report to you based on what you let us know. Now, you do need to be a member to vote on this. Sometimes we've, have, we've had people vote here because there's a little confusion of, am I a member or am I not? So let me give you just a little bit of information about membership. We have a two-step process in order to become a member. That starts with intro to MC4, and then that leads to a secondary time, a gathering, where we explain what it means to be a member, to make a commitment to each other here at Mill Creek Foursquare. So if you've not done that, you're invited into that. That first step, intro to MC4, we did just last Sunday, and it was wonderful. We had 35 people there, and it, it was a vibrant place to see all these people who are excited to be a part of our congregation. So your next invite into that is in April. The detail there is up on your screen. You're invited to the next intro to MC4, invited to consider membership, invited to consider commitment to this congregation of Jesus followers, okay? Any questions so far? We doing all right? Do I still have you? Good. Okay. Now, take your financial report. Now we're going to dive into numbers. I'm going to try to make this as understandable as I possibly can, okay? So if you go ahead and open it up, what you're going to see is on the left side what's called the balance sheet, and on the right side, the income and expense. I want to walk you through this. We have our business manager, Connie, right here. Connie, go ahead and raise your hand. Following the service, if you have any questions about any of these numbers, we want you to ask them. Please ask them. You can know anything and everything about our books except one thing. You cannot know how much your neighbor is giving. That's private. But otherwise, we steward our books with transparency to the point that if you wanted to sit down with Connie and look at them, you're invited to do so. We want you to experience trust in our stewardship. So on that note, let's look first at the balance sheet. The numbers are big, but here's, here's the magic of this, right? You'll look at in the middle of the page and you'll see total assets and then go down and you'll see total liabilities and equity. Those two numbers match. That means this is a good balance sheet, right? So we, the top half is the assets. The bottom half there are, are the things that we owe, essentially, and then the equity that we've already built in. So a few things that I'd like to point out to you. You'll see there down at the bottom, you'll see a starred section that says includes 617,000 in restricted funds and 455,000 in three months reserves. Let me explain what those are. So restricted funds are monies that you give very specifically that have to be used for the exact things you gave them for. So when we ask you to potentially help get kids to camp and you give a gift to get a kid to camp, that has to go to getting a kid to camp. We can't spend it on the building or on gravel or on Coke Zero. We cannot spend it on such things. It has to be that kid's getting to camp. That's an illustration of restricted monies. So within that, you gave monies in this last year, over $200,000, in fact, specifically for the ongoing work of the building project. So that money has to be applied in that fashion, okay? Those are our restricted funds. Now, our three-month reserves, this is good accounting practices. This is essentially our emergency fund, the equivalent of three months of our functioning budget as a church. So we have this set aside, and we do not touch this. We've had this set aside for years, and the only reason we would ever touch this is a true emergency. We wondered if we would need to touch this when COVID settled on us. We did not, and so it remains there. But let's say something happens either to our congregation, it's happened to other churches, a fire, something happens, or there's something that happens in our greater community and our church can stand in a place of helping those in need because of that. We stand ready with an emergency fund 
to move. So that's wonderful. We worked hard on building that and it remains in place and we are grateful for it. Then you're also going to see there over 1 million, so $1.3 million in designated savings. Designated savings are interior designations. It's not that we've necessarily asked you to give, that's restricted. Designated is what our council decides we want to allot monies to. So for instance, sometimes, in fact, often, at the end of the year, we have overage. And we, as a council, get to decide how we want to use that. Do we just want to throw it into our contingency funds, AKA kind of savings to be used when a project is in front of us that we'd really like to move on? Or do we want to put it towards something like the building project or improving things around our facility or giving funds away to our ministry partners? All these things we do, but those are, designations that our council makes from your faithful giving. So that's the difference, and you'll see that there. There is 1.3 million in designated savings, and they are specifically at this time dedicated towards the building project, okay? I'm hoping you understand. I wanna point out one other thing to you. I point this out every year, and I just want you to see that it's shrinking, and that's our mortgage. It's now at $871,000. For those of you who've been here, yeah, you'll remember when that was three million. When this building project's over, we, we have vision for more improvements on our facility. But I am really excited to tackle this with you in the next few years. My heart has a goal that this debt will be eradicated in a handful of years and we'll get to celebrate that and repurpose all of those monies for mission and ministry. Cannot wait. We're close, friends. We're close. Yeah. All right. So that is the balance sheet. Now, if you will jump with me over to the other side, the income and expense sheet. This is specific to the year 2023. So from January through December of last year, what you will see is first the operating income and expense. That's the top half and the restricted income and restricted expense. So the top half of the sheet is essentially what you give free and clear in what we would call tithes and offerings. So when you give on a Sunday, when you drop a gift in one of those boxes or when you give online, most commonly that's just a gift to the church, a tithe or an offering. And we use that for our functional budget. It's what the council uses to project a budget and then make sure we're staying on that budget if our giving is indeed meeting what we anticipated, right? So we've had some very consistent years. We've been able to map out direction to build budgets. And here's the good news, church family, every year, in March, Jennifer and I have been here 18 years. Every year we've been here, we've been in the black. Every year, every year, yeah. And this is, this is the credit to every one of us who have served on the church council and our current church council. So let's, let's talk through the operating income and expense. What you'll see there is a number just over $2 million in tithable offering. You were extremely generous, dear church family. What you, what you don't know but need to know is that your level of generosity puts you in the top 25 churches in Foursquare. There are 1,600 U.S. Foursquare churches, and you are in the top 25 in terms of volume of giving. So I honor you, church family. Thank you for your generosity. You love the work of the kingdom of God, and you give as a reflection of your love of King Jesus and your trust of the work that's happening in our midst. So I just, I just want to say thank you. I love belonging with you, I serve on Foursquare's board of directors. And the reason I tell you that is not to say, ooh, wow. It is to say that as a representative of you, I am just so proud to belong with you. You're so wonderful. So you gave just over $2 million, but then you'll also see program-related income. What's that? Part of it is what we've called for years manna from heaven, a.k.a. Microsoft parking. So about 
57,000 of that is from an agreement that we have to allow Microsoft to park and the commuter bus comes through and it destroys our curbs. We're going to take care of that in this process. But they give us money to utilize this every month. This started about 16, 17 years ago when we were so razor thin tight on our margins that they walked in and they were like, can we pay you to use your parking lot? We were like, yes, <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> So it continues to this day. Also, there's uh, the largest part of that, 91,000 is interest that we've earned this past year. By the way, that's by far and away the most interest we've ever earned in any year, and that is because of the, the volume of monies we've had in deposit as we've awaited to execute the building project. So we just want you to know that we even put that to good use to benefit our congregation even more. Now, if you look then at the operating expense, uh, let me walk you just through, through here. So the first thing you're going to see is what's called ICFG tithe. That stands for International Church of the Foursquare Gospel. So as a Foursquare church in good standing, we give 10% off of everything you give in trust to this congregation. So as you tithe, so does our entire congregation to the movement. And that's the means by which Foursquare funds itself. So all the way from our overseers to the network of missions, we're in 160 nations globally. This is the way Foursquare funds itself. So we are a church in good standing. Now you may see there a percentage on the side, and that is 9.2%, and you're like, wait a minute, we're not tithing 10%. Well, that number is constructed off of simply the tithable offering. That's what you need to know. So this, is, this percentage is based off of all of our income, the total income, the 2.161, but it's actually computed off of our tithable offering. So we are giving 10% to the work of, of global ministry with Foursquare. You'll see that our largest expense by far and away is our ministry team. And I just want to say to you that our, our staff and ministry team is the most valuable asset we have. We're in the middle of building a very expensive budget, but let's just be clear, that's not the most valuable asset we have. People will always be the most valuable asset. Our ministry team and you as the congregation, you're the, the best asset of this congregation. By the way, the church is always a people, not a place. We just happen to gather in this place that goes by this name. So thank you for funding and uh, our, our ministry staff. This is all the costs associated with having them from payroll to insurance and the like. Then you will see loans, which is uh, what we've paid. The first line of 121 is our mortgage payment. And then our loans, that's lease on copiers and various things like that. And you'll see facilities and ministry. So obviously when we have a facility, costs are there, and those costs, by the way, in building more facilities, costs go up. And so we have budgeted that in this year, anticipating more facility. And then you'll see ministry budgets. These are what we allow our directors and pastors to function with to execute the ministry of our congregation. So you just need to know that our, our largest in-house ministry uh, budget is children's. Children's ministry is our priority just right behind that very close is the youth ministry. So you just need to know that our generational ministries are our financial priority. That's where we're putting our resources. We're also putting resources to improve the spaces where they gather. More on that here in a little bit. And then what you'll see is outside ministry donations. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that here in a moment. But that's essentially what we do on Mother's Day and Father's Day. We extend a gift to the Everett uh, Pregnancy Resource Center in the name of all of our moms and dads. And then at the end of the year, we give gifts to our ministry partners. And that's where we account for it in our expenses. And then what you'll see is our transfer to designated savings. So hopefully you remember from the balance sheet my details about designated giving. These are monies that we had that the council could decide what to do with to assign them towards a cause. And I will share that with you a little bit more here. So then we get down to the restricted income and the restricted expense. In some form or fashion, this is like money that comes in and goes out because it has to come in for a purpose and go out for said purpose. So you'll see within all of this, 
uh, two things that I really want to put in front of you, the missions outreach and missionary income. This is what you specifically give for things like benevolence. So benevolence is a budgeted category whereby we can help people first in our church family when a need arises. And some of you have benefited from this in times of need, and then when you have had surplus, you have given to benefit others. And I cannot recall a time when there has been a sincere need in our family of believers that we have not been able to move in some form and expression of help. So again, I just want to say to you, thank you for, as it's said in the scriptures, fulfilling the law of Christ. Thank you for bearing one another's burdens. Now, you're not in the day-to-day of that. You trust that to our ministry staff and our overseers, the executing of that, but you're the ones who equip us to do it. In other words, we couldn't carry it out unless you gave us the means to actually do it. So thank you. But also, we have a community outreach fund. And this community outreach fund, this is a marvelous thing because some of your employers like to match funds. But their their requirement is that it has to go towards the good of the community. Well, we have people within our larger community knocking on our doors all the time. And so some of you who work for Microsoft or Boeing or Google give a part of what you contribute to the church this way because what you give is then matched by your employer. All those said monies then go towards helping in community outreach. This is how we do our food programs. This is how we feed kids internationally. These are the funds that you give that help us accomplish these things. And then you'll see that that building project money, it is 229,000. So that's just specifically what you gave for the express purpose of continuing to help make sure that this building project gets finished. So thank you for that. And then you'll look at the restricted expenses. Again, you'll see the inflow and the outflow of missions and outreach. Uh, We have a little bit of additional principal paid on our mortgage that was a gift given to us. And then you'll see the designated expenses. These are inward designations. For instance, we prioritized getting our entire ministry staff down to Anaheim last year for Foursquare's centennial celebration. Last year was 100 years for Foursquare. And so once a year, Foursquare gathers. It's an international gathering. It's called Connection. It previously was called Convention. And we prioritized getting our entire staff down there to experience 100 years of Foursquare. Your generosity allowed that to happen. The council made an inner designation and we got all of our ministry staff there. That's where that expense is recorded. That's one of numerous things. This is where camps, right, are accounted for. It's where Bible study income and then outflow is accounted for. Retreats, everything like that would be referenced in this number. So here's here's another thing that I'd like to point out to you. If you take the net operating income, there in the black, in the middle of the page, and then you take the net restricted income, the 366, what you'll see is that for for the fiscal year of 2023, we had a total net income of $614,000. That's a remarkable financial year. Thank you. Thank you, Mill Creek Forest Club. To give you a a, a perspective or a frame of reference here as we continue, one of our our valued ways of communicating trends is for you to look at our giving trends over the years. So we wanna show you a slide that begins in 2010 and continues through 2023. It's coming. There it is, thank you, Robin. So as you'll see here, we have grown considerably. Let me share with you just a few points of highlight. So in 2010, our tithes were essentially half of what they were in 2023. But we were on a growth trajectory and you'll see that essentially every year we grew up until COVID. And then COVID happened. We anticipated the severity of COVID to be worse than it actually was fiscally. So while the numbers began to take a dip here, we anticipated the potential of of it being far worse. 
So even the COVID years were in many respects good news. But notice with me that the two years prior to COVID were the only two years that we crested $2 million of unrestricted, just in general, tithable income. Now, last year, we were back over $2 million. It tells a story about the trajectory of our church. The COVID years were undoubtedly difficult, but potentially you're noticing this as you look around. We are a growing church again. There are many who are choosing to join our ranks, to join us as we respond to God, to join us as we seek to, to make disciples of Jesus, to join us as we seek to extend the gospel into our family's neighborhood, workplace, and world. This is really exciting and good news. So that will show you a little bit of our trends. Now, let me tell you more about our end of year giving. From your generosity over the course of 2023, we were able to obviously meet budget, exceed it, and assign not only a good chunk of that to ongoing work of our building project, but we were also able to continue one of our fiscal priorities. Years and years ago, we decided as a council that we wanted to take from what we had received and bless, just move towards ministry partners who were doing good works. We were partnering with them in service in some form or fashion, but could we give gifts to strengthen their arms, if you will, to lift their arms up as they continued their work? And so now for years, we've been giving monies away at the end of the year, Christmas gifts, if you will. And this last year, we certainly did it. So here's our accounting. We gave $5,000 to our Young Life partners. We have two area directors that attend our church. I'm looking at one of them. Uh, Many of you work and volunteer in Young Life. We believe in the work of Young Life, getting into the schools and, and celebrating the life of Jesus with our kids, our middle schoolers, our high schoolers, and some even on college campuses. We extended yet another gift to the Pregnancy Resource Center. We believe in them and their partnership. Melora, their CEO, is a personal friend, and we're very grateful. We continue to believe in the Everett Gospel Mission and the cutting edge work that they're doing with the unhoused, the homeless, those who are caught up in mental illness and addiction and find themselves on our streets. Jesus calls us to care about those who, for whatever reason, find themselves in such a situation and to engage them. And so the, preg- not, not, well, the Pregnancy Research Center is doing good work, but the Everett Gospel Mission is the entity that's doing frontline work in Snohomish County. And so I'm, Jennifer and I give personally to this from our monthly budget. We, as a congregation, believe in giving to this together. Hand in hand is a foster care ministry, and it has numerous parts to it. Uh, Safe Place is a a spot where kids come in the immediacy of being pulled out of their situation, and they're usually kept there for up to 72 hours. So we love to support the work that is happening in hand in hand and care for families and kids who are in crisis. We use the Bible Project all the time, don't we? I love the Bible Project. So it's at the end of the year, we just want to say, thanks for continuing to do what you're doing. We are benefited by what you're doing. We gave uh, a gift to Compassion First, doing anti-human trafficking work, rescuing women and children, particularly out of the, the sex slave industry in Indonesia. They continue to do good work there and build more and more homes for these rescued girls. Four Score Disaster Relief, One of the things that I love about Foursquare is, of course, we have boots on the ground in almost every location, meaning we have churches. And so Foursquare Disaster Relief Strength is together we can give, and then we can appropriate those funds when there's a disaster. So this started actually with Katrina in New Orleans, and it has grown from there. Nearly every disaster on U.S. soil Foursquare Disaster Relief is there. Some of you gave, for instance, to the Maui wildfires. And we have Foursquare churches on Maui that are ministering just very simple things like food and water in the immediate crisis and then ongoing aid to those who find themselves uprooted, displaced through such things. We continue to give to the Almeida Initiative. We've got IBARS here. IBARS is 
one of our supported missionaries. Can I embarrass you? Can you raise your hand? Uh, Ibars has shared here before. If you've not heard a story, it's the best story you'll hear anytime, anywhere, any year. One of the best testimonies I've ever heard. It brings me to tears every time because of the grace of God on his life. Uh, how do you become a Turkish, let's see, Turkish Afghani messianic rabbi? Is that fair? How does that happen? That's Ibars. But he's now working towards ministry towards Muslims in our immediate area. And we are supportive of that and will continue to be invited to partner with him both not only in resources, but our time and our willingness to engage. Prisoners for Christ, uh, I need to get going here. I'm running out of time. Then you'll see La Misión or Rancho, Rancho de Sus Nunos for over 20 years. We have been partnering with them. We essentially, as a church, we built roughly half of their large campus. And it was last year that they experienced a devastating fire and a loss of numerous buildings. And so we gave a specific gift towards the beginning of reparation there. And then we gave very specific missionary gifts to our partners. We, we support these missionaries every month out of our hard budget, out of what you give to us. At the end of the year, we give extra blessings to equip them for the holidays and for special projects that they've identified they need help with. And isn't it wonderful that you are the sort of congregation that funds global missions? I wanna just tell you about one. I probably should have showed you the video here, but for weeks now on WhatsApp, I've been getting hundreds of pictures from a man named Asif. He's in Pakistan and we gave a financial gift at the end of the year for him to hold what he calls revivals, where he, in, he goes to communities in Pakistan and he invites them to hear the gospel and he gives them beds and bed sheets and coats and clothes. Hundreds of thousands of people have come to these and it's born of the resources that you gave to make it happen. So from Asif, through me, he says, Thank you, Mill Creek Foursquare. And that's just one example of many that I could tell you about of how we're stewarding the resources that you entrust to our care. Okay, we are now through the balance sheet and the income and expense, and I have about five minutes left. You still with me? Okay, okay. Again, remember, questions can be asked. Following the service, Connie will be at the info center and hunt down any one of our council members. They will help you as well, okay? So, projects that we accomplished this last year. So, one of our goals is that when we have overage at the end of a year, we like to assign it to projects that we know need some attention the following year. So, instead of burdening our hard budget that year, we just assign from our overage to accomplish these things. The vast majority of that, again, has gone to the building project but we've accomplished other things alongside the building project. For instance, building B <clears throat> is in the process of renovation and it is, it is getting close, right? If you walk in there, you'll see in the foyer area, the polished floors, we have new bathrooms, we have new counters and new countertops. It's going to be a much improved space for our youth in particular. New soundboard and camera upgrades to aid our online experience. We consistently have, we don't call it an online campus, but roughly about 250 people watch our services live as they are happening, and then more watch it throughout the week. So we want to allow that experience to be as meaningful as it possibly can be. We uh, put new security systems on doors and improve cameras. <laughs> the police have utilized our cameras numerous times. Yes, in case you're wondering, we can see your license plate. <laughs> we have a new projector. New soundboard and computer for the chapel where our youth primarily meet. We got updated water fountains and filling stations. We now look like airports. <laughs> we got updated AEDs to make sure that we are ready should an emergency happen in our midst. And we even got a washer and dryer upstairs. So that's helpful. Yeah, all these things we accomplished in 2023. Now the building project. We are near the end, my friends. Four years ago, on the very Sunday that COVID hit, we launched the building project. 
I had been privately meeting with people for six months. We had visioneered that moment, but you cannot anticipate a once in a lifetime pandemic. So I decided to cast the vision for the four weeks as planned and then just recognized that we very well may just have to put it on the back burner and see what would, what would happen. You gave, during the pandemic, $2 million. Then, as we were wondering if it might be actually time for us to execute the project, as you know, every cost went up in COVID, and it really hasn't gone down, has it? How, guys, how can a Big Mac cost 14 bucks? <laughs> Something's not right about this. By the way, if you need evidence that In-N-Out is the greatest fast food restaurant ever, you can get a double-double meal for cheaper than a Big Mac meal. I'm just saying, guys. I'm just, yes, in and out, come our way. Okay, so this building project, uh, our costs went up by 50%. Our costs went up to $3.1 million. That was a daunting discovery. We recast the vision to you, you gave. We raised the $3.1 million to execute this building project, and we are on pace to execute the building project at the $3.1 million. It's awesome. You guys are going to love it. The, the fellowship fireside room that will be right downstairs is just gonna be beautiful. Right, where it, would you pray for our team? Pastor Jennifer, Kurt, and Nathan, our facilities director, have worked tirelessly, tirelessly to make sure that this project goes well. And so it's at the stage right now where, you know, work upon work is happening, like, you know, construction people upon a construction people all trying to execute the project. We're having to decide on all the minutia, what furniture is going where. It's Guys, picking out furniture is stressful. <laughs> it's stressful. It sounds wonderful, but it's stressful, doggone it, right? So would you just pray that we have done this project so well. We've stewarded it so well. Would you just pray that we have grace and strength to finish it well? As of right now, we plan to dedicate the facility on May 5th. So we will have our district supervisor with us and we hope to have other very special guests with us on that day. It will be a day of celebration. Put it on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss it. Also wanted to give you an update on our dealings with Sound Transit. And if you're brand new here and you're like, why do you want to tell us about Sound Transit? Well, because they're building a light rail and they told us in the spring of 2022 that they might come and require our property of us under eminent domain. Oh, that was rather intimidating. That was a sleepless night for me. Um, I have had to learn new levels of yieldedness to the Lord through COVID, through the building project, and through dealings with Sound Transit. And I just want to tell you that in all of them, the Lord has proven faithful to every dotting of the I and every crossing of the T. The Lord is faithful. So it was late last year that Sound Transit asked us for a meeting and they were bringing their leadership. And that's when you just go, mm, right? Oh, you want to meet with us? We had requested several meetings with them, but that was different than them asking to have a meeting with us. We, we expected that we might get news that they had decided to build the station and parking lot on our side of the freeway and that they would require our property. That's what we expected. But what we heard was actually quite different. And we are not going to show you imagery because they have not publicly released it and we want to honor that. But they met with us and they, they said, your church and alongside that of Alderwood Community Church there in Linwood, both of our properties were up for grabs. Your churches merited a great deal of response, not only from your congregations, but from ministry partners. The three schools that we work with every year, they said they would miss us. They asked that we not be displaced. And so they said, we've listened. And they, they have, they have, 
they have made renderings that even if they come to our side of the freeway, their hoped intention at this point is to miss our property. <laughs> yeah, that, that, we've been sitting on that news for a little while, and, and I have to tell you, you know, Jennifer and Kurt and I were on that call, and once it was over, I was like, so I called Jennifer, and I'm like, is that, was that, did, did we really, that happened? Did I hear that right? And she's like, you heard that right. I called Kurt, and he, I think you were on your way to a hockey game, right? He was on his way to a, a, a cracking game, right? But he's crying in the car. <laughs> and here's just what you guys need to know is uh, I just wanna take a moment. I wanna honor them because they, they just worked tirelessly on this. But they met with civic leaders and, and really we wanna speak well of our civic leaders. And there's, there's several in particular that went to bat for us. Uh, Snohomish County Executive Dave Summers uh, Mayor Missy Franklin of Everett, Mayor Chris Frizzell of Linwood. All three of them went to bat for us and asked the Sound Transit Board to really work on seeing if our property was actually needed. And we just want to honor them and thank them, but I want to honor you too for the work that you've done. As I said to you, Kurt, I just want now want to say to the congregation, it's the Lord who has probably saved our campus, but he did that through your efforts, the two of you. And I just want to honor you. Oh, my time's up and there's more I just wanted to tell you. I'm just gonna do it fast. <laughs> you are a sweet spirited congregation that is an entire delight to serve. We are close to our long-term goal of paying off our debt and putting all of that towards mission and more church planting, more missionary care, more missionary support. We have increased opportunity with our facility towards missional engagement. We get to have greater community experience because of kitchen and facility space, but we also get to feed our community. And we're all, wanna know one of the things we're doing in 2024? We are starting a homeless feed because they are right here. Some are even in this room. We are going to begin to do that last Friday of every month. This is what it will allow us. <laughs> Missions trips came back online in 2023, more in 2024, and we are growing. Our church is growing. So can I just end with this, an invitation? A growing church, mean, you know what that means? There's more kids to serve. <laughs> You're like, oh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Our ministry teams are doing great. Actually, uh, more are engaged on ministry teams than any time I can remember. It's just that to serve our kiddos in particular the way we want to, we just need ongoing participation in serving our kids. They are the most valuable to speak, again, of assets. They are the most valuable asset we have. So would you consider joining one of our ministry teams, in particular our children's ministry team? Once a month makes all the difference in the world. It's a, it's a game changer for our ministry team. So if you would consider that, I just put that in front of you. And if you're not sure how to go about that, you can go on our website or just email me and I will connect the dots. That's fine by me. My email, by the way, is on the website. Would you go ahead and stand with me, please? Our time is up. As you go to get your kids, would you thank them on my behalf? The Lord bless you, Mill Creek Foursquare. The Lord bless you and keep you. He who goes before you is he who is immediately with you and keeps you always. There is not a moment of your day, life, and world that misses his view. The God who keeps you, according to the Psalms, neither sleeps nor slumbers. He's ever attentive to you. So, the grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be yours. Amen. 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 We'll see you next Sunday.